Hi. Got three, actually two, put them over there. two Weezer albums that I own. Uh, two, both of these <clears throat> purchased secondhand. Um, that was about it a year and a half ago, and that was probably about two, two or so years ago. Uh, the blue album, the green album, I think they're called. Um, was it 1994 and was it 2001? I'm not actually sure when that came out. Um, but they are, or for me, well, actually, I shouldn't say that because I don't, I can't say about all the other stuff they released after that. But this album, the album that came between these two, Pinkerton, and this album are three pretty good albums. This one over here make believe and the one that came after the green album i think it's called maladroit i wasn't uh as big a fan with now this one i see i don't have this is because when i bought it i think i've talked about this before it was empty i own the case for, for weezer's make believe album but i don't own the disc because like i said it was empty produced by rick rubin these two were produced by uh rick okasek is that how you pronounce his name? Rick Okasik, the guy from The Cars. The main, I think he's the singer of The Cars and the main songwriter of The Cars. Um, he produced these two. And he also produced the Red Album, I think. Which actually is not that bad either. Um, I haven't listened to it very much, but if I some of the songs on the album I do like. Which is the album that's got Beverly Hills on it? Because I don't like that song, Beverly Hills. I think that's probably the worst song as Weezer. Certainly the worst single they ever released. Um, is that on this? <laughs> it's on this one here. Um, anyway, so talking about these two albums. So this came out, I remember when this came out in 1994. Um, when I was a young teenager. And I think the first song I ever heard was the Buddy Holly. And saw the video for that, which is, if you haven't seen it, is it like a um, kind of like a parody? Well, not really a parody. It's like they're almost like put into a Happy Days. Like they, the way that it's made, it looks like they they are playing on the set of Happy a Happy Days episode in was it Arnold's diner? They kind of cut it together with footage from Happy Days, you know, you know, and um, they're all wearing, you know. They're all made up to look like they're in the 50s, 1950s, or whenever Happy Days was set. Was it set in the 1950s? I think it was. And so that was kind of, um, I think, how they found their initial fame. I'm not sure if that was the first uh, single. I think actually Undone might have been the first single off this album. But I'd say, for at least in my country, uh, Buddy Holly was the one that kind of uh, broke them, maybe, you'd say. Um, I was right. Undone was the first single, but it says that it was it was directed by Spike Jones. So it's kind of interesting that they must have had quite a bit of um, hype behind them if they got Rick Ocasek to release the album. They're on Geffen, and Spike Jones directed their first video. It sounds like they really had the uh, the machine behind them, didn't they? And it says uh, it featured Weezer performing. Yes, blah blah. blah. The video became an instant hit on hit on MTV. Jones also directed Buddy Holly, splicing the band with footage from the Happy Days, and it achieved heavy rotation on MTV. The other song from this album uh, that I think, for me, kind of uh, probably is my favorite Weezer a song. Uh, yeah, at least being top five is Say It Ain't So, which is probably one of their most famous songs as well. Um, that's really a, a <clears throat> like a kind of a, a, a perfect song. Like I think that song is like one of those songs, I'm not saying it's like a, the best song ever written, but it's like some songs I just feel like have everything. Like that song that has kind of the quiet verse. Uh, it kind of sings quite softly and in some parts in kind of falsetto and then the chorus comes in quite big and i really like the solo of it and the kind of the bridge part 
and the um and the kind of calm outro the resolution back again of the kind of same strum guitar as, as the as the introduction <clears throat> uh so the lineup of this period was uh patrick wilson he's still in the band rivers coma who's the singer and main songwriter and brian bell so those three are still uh, that was the basis of the time matt sharp and he was replaced um after pinkerton during the green album with mikey welsh and then after that that guy scott something can't remember his name um but like i said um i'd say actually i don't know what i'd say i was gonna say most fans i actually i have no idea what the average weezer fan thinks all i know is that they've released a shitload of albums especially in the last 10 years because i went through their discography and half the albums i'd even know they had released i knew they released the one with a dog on the front the one with the fat guy from lost the red album and then i also know they did kind of a a um an album of like 80s covers i don't even know if they're all 80s covers but i think that was the teal album where they did that cover of africa but they actually done a whole lot more in between those things i just said um and just from kind of uh, kind of half taking notice of them and reading reviews of stuff over the last 10 or so years at least a lot of those those albums get very mixed reviews um and it seems like a lot of people don't like them as much um i used to have pinkerton i bought pinkerton second hand back in would have been like 2000 2001 and i really like that album I'd say that's my favorite Weezer album. Um, I like the production on it. Like that first song, I think is Tide of Six is the first song. The first time I heard that, I remember the first time playing that CD, it's got like a really live sound. It gave me the feeling of watching a band live. And there's not many times where I listen to an album, you know, a, a recorded in a record studio where it really gives that feeling of live performance uh, especially this kind of band and but that that first song tide of six the, the first track on pinkerton i still remember the first time hearing that i was in a car and i was in a car cd player and the way it just kind of starts off there's like a bit of feedback and then the drums the drum got a very live sound the bass it's kind of quite raw sounding so yeah quite just different about it um, don't actually know who produced oh they produced it themselves weezer produced pinkerton um el scorcho was the was the with the big single not the big it was a single off that i think the album didn't do as well as they had hoped off the back of the blue blue album and so they had a bit of a a, a gap between that and this and like i said in that time uh matt sharp left the band and he I don't know if he joined another band or it was it was his band he always had called the Rentals. I've never actually heard anything from the Rentals, but I have heard the kind of I get what would you call it the narrative that since Matt Sharp left, they've never um, captured that same brilliance that they had on the Blue Album and Pinkerton. Is that true? I don't know. Mikey Welsh or Welch joined in this period, I think, just for one album. He had a uh, had some trouble. I think I think he had like a basically like a nervous breakdown. At the least, while touring, and then he left the band. And he has passed since then. He has he did die. Um. More recently, it wasn't like any time there. I can't remember exactly when it was. I'm just quickly. Oh, two thousand. Okay, two thousand eleven. Jeez, was it that long ago? these things i think oh, i'm sure i'm sure i read that like two years ago or something or maybe he died during COVID or something no it was 12 years ago i think he um he passed away like from drugs maybe or um da -da -da -da. he was found dead in a chicago hotel room from a suspected heroin overdose leading to a heart attack 
So yeah, he kind of, um, you know, I'm sure he had issues before he was in Weezer, but a lot of times being in a big band and finding that kind of um, fame can uh, exacerbate them. But he also, he was, I read that he was with Juliana Hatfield, like he recorded her with her before Weezer. Not that Julia Juliana Hatfield has that particularly. Um, she's not as big as Weezer, would you say? No, I wouldn't say she is. Um, anyway, this album, I think this is a good album as well. As as much as people say that maybe they lost the magic after Matt Sharp left, I think this is a is a a decent album. Um, <clears throat> Looking at this, I don't like Island in the Sun. I never liked that song. I don't like the kind of, uh, the hook, the hip, hip thing. Uh, I like, I really like Hash Pipe the first time I heard that. I thought that was a really good single. I like Don't Let Go. I liked Smile. Um, <clears throat> so yeah. Only two. And I don't have the album that I really, really like of this. There was actually a chance I could have bought it online. Someone was selling it, but I was, for whatever reason, I mean, was there and I planned to get it. Maybe I just forgot about getting it or something. He was like selling it for like $5, which would have been like a pretty good price to pick it up for. But anyway, like I said, I, was, I bought this. I picked this up and I thought, oh, okay, Weezer. I've never actually listened to this album the whole way through. I'll pick that up and I got home and usually I check inside. Nowadays, I almost always check inside, but uh, I didn't at this this uh, particular day, and yeah. So I keep this on the off chance that I come across the disc, or more than likely, I'm probably just going to take out the uh, the um, booklet and the backing card and put it use it for uh, something where I need a new case, jewel case for. So yeah, that's kind of a a bit of a um, a largely pointless video, isn't it? <laughs> Just vaguely talking about two Weezer albums I own. Uh, this you can see this one. The condition isn't great because the um, booklet is being ripped some for some reason. I don't know. That wasn't me. That was like the someone's tried to put tape on there, and that wasn't me either. Pretty simple liner notes. Uh, all songs written by Rivers Cuomo. So you hear that he's quite a control freak. And I remember reading a story, this was a long time ago, but apparently if any of the other band members made a mistake on stage, like, I don't know, played a bum note or something, they were fined by him. They had to pay a fine, which seems a little bit ridiculous. But um, yeah, he kind of... um. He always kind of portrayed himself as, you know, in that kind of geeky, nerdy way with his with the glasses and things. But also, I I heard a, a, a interview he did with uh, Rick Rubin in the last two years, and he actually sound, sounded relatively normal. And I'm saying that because there was a period. I think it was around this period, around after Pinkerton. There was a lot of press for the Green Album because they had gone kind of into a hiatus and I think he had gone back to, well not gone back, he had gone to Harvard University and um, and there was all that other stuff like he had a quite bad depression and stuff. And then some of the interviews of around this period, he seemed quite strange in the interviews, almost a little bit like autistic. And I'm not saying that in a derogatory way. You know, uh, I think I have certain... Uh, uh, certain i don't know what you call qualities of of autism maybe not full fully but i'd say I, I i'm probably on the spectrum somewhere they say everyone's on the spectrum aren't they and, and it's to, to depends what degree but i'd say um going through my life and reading about things and talking to some people i would probably say i'm somewhere on the spectrum um more than say just the average person but he's uh rivers Cuomo seemed very yeah, quite strange in his in his interviews. Uh, quite, I don't know, aloof and um, almost it almost sounded like a bit uh, 
affected like it was an act or something because then after like i said i've i've seen and read and heard interviews with him after more recently and he doesn't seem like that at all maybe he matured as, as he got older and he maybe that's why who knows but um there was also other stories that he had like a, a database of like thousands of songs like the way he write he wrote songs he would approach it very kind of almost like systematically like he knew certain guitar chords you know go together well and you can kind of rearrange them and make five different songs and so he would put these into a spreadsheet and um when it came to making a new album he'd just kind of go into the spreadsheet and pull them out and go right, here's song one two three da, 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 da. again i don't know how true or not true that is or you know whether that's kind of this part of the uh, the mythologizing of uh, rivers cuomo um but yeah like i said in the my feeling now is just again just from kind of like i said before kind of half taking notice of them and what they've done it seems that they just there's always new releases coming out and that um a lot of those albums don't get particularly good reviews and that that uh cover they did of africa i didn't like that i i really don't like i've talked about this before kind of stuff but i don't like when bands do almost kind of like jokey if it's if a band is jokey through and through and that's their shtick that's fine you want to kind of be like a a, a band with comedy at the forefront of your of your of your art then i don't have a problem with that but bands that kind of throw it in here and there have kind of like I can't even really define what I mean, but a band like Weezer that are in every other way, a normal band. Then they release an album called the Teal album. And then I've seen like videos and even live footage and they were wearing like pastel colored eighties suits with like shoulder pads. And they were doing 1980s style covers of like Toto. And I can't, don't know the other bands they did, but, uh, it's like you like a, I don't know like a, a tribute band or a, like I said a novelty act and it's I don't know kind of like it's like a what do you call it it's like degrading your own band it's kind of like treating your band as though they're like uh, I don't know like a joke anyway I'll leave it there thank you for watching.